In this video we'll talk about color manage workflow and we'll take an overview, a bird's eye view of a sort and see how we might take a, think about color manage workflow. What are all the components we we'll might need and this video will serve to provide you kind of like a map so you'll know where you are and what components you'll need. So let's start, shall we? Well, in order to make to make this easier for us, I'm going to divide it into two sections. Okay? So on the left we'll talk about the hardware components you'll need and on the right we'll talk about the software components you'll need. Let's start with the hardware. Obviously you'll need a good quality monitor. Now a good quality monitor is an abstract term, doesn't mean much. I'm sure most of you would like me to tell you exactly what model of monitor to buy so you don't have to worry about that. But there is a problem from me trying to kind of recommend that mainly because there are so many different models and manufacturers of different monitors out there I haven't had the chance to test all of them there are various needs for every user and also some of them might change over time right there are new models and new manufacturers appearing every day and also some of them could or could not be available in your country so it creates a problem for me to tell you hey buy this monitor or buy that monitor but what I can do is give you an idea of what are characteristics that a good quality monitor for photographic editing would need. And if you know those characteristics, based on that you can choose your monitor, which will fit your geographic location. Is it available in your country? Or can you get it from another country for cheap, right? Can you afford it? Does your budget fit into it? And what are your standards? Are you a fine art landscape photographer or are you a wedding photographer or you just don't have any money, you're just a retoucher starting out, right? All of those things is something you need to consider. So if I give you the characteristics you'll need for a monitor, then based on that you will be able to choose the monitor that fits your particular needs. I think that's a better approach. We also can divide the hardware components into two other components. One is that you'll need a hardware calibrator. Now, I, I've written down here a hardware calibrator because you can also calibrate, technically speaking, your monitor by using your eyes and software, but it's not a very good idea and I'll show you later why. Um, our eyes are very adaptive and this can be very deceptive when you need to be objective with your color um, calibration. So that's why a hardware calibrator, a small device that looks pretty much like a mouse in most cases, is something you want to invest in. And the way it works essentially is you put it on your monitor and it also comes with a software. Now software runs on your monitor and it displays certain already known predefined colors and it measures that against the current appearance of your monitor. And then it tells you, hey, adjust a, uh, a little bit of brightness, uh, you know, reduce the uh, the reds or the blues and things of that nature on your monitor, you do all that and that process is called calibration. But once you've done with your calibration process, you need to write down all the findings of that calibration process. That's called profiling and we'll talk about that in a minute. So once you've done with your calibration process, you know what you, the adjustment needs to be done, you save that in a little piece of data called profile and then that profile gets loaded into your video card every time you load, boot up your operating system and it corrects the color on your monitor. It puts it in a well-defined, predetermined, kind of like an objective state. Very important so that we can manage our color in a proper way, especially the appearance of color. Another thing we have to worry about is the ambient light. And of course ambient light is something that can affect the appearance of our image as well, quite a bit because uh, even though monitor produces color itself we also have to take into account the ambient light because the ambient light could mix with the, with the light produced by the monitor and give us a shift in color and tone which we don't want so we have to choose the proper ambient color I mean proper ambient lighting but let's say that we don't have that luxury or we may not have a proper condition well we also might think about investing into a hood for a monitor and as you can imagine what it does it protects the surface of the monitor from the ambient light and it lets the monitor be the dominant the dominant device that produces the key light we need to judge our images so that's what we need from the hardware standpoint right just essentially those three components good quality monitor, ambient lighting, or at least a hood for a monitor, and a hardware calibrator. On the software side of things, we also need at least two components. Actually more than that, but you can divide it into two categories. 
we need profiles and we talked about the monitor profile so once we use our hardware calibrated type device we measure what adjustments we need to make to our monitor to display color properly and once we know the me measurements we record them in a little piece of data called profile and that's called monitor profile and that's get loaded up every time you boot your system to correct for the color to compensate for the the tint that you see on your monitor so that's very important because it puts our monitor in a reproducible state on another monitor and also we need to think about the document profile and document ICC profile for the most part does two jobs essentially one is that it allows somebody else who also has a calibrated monitor to display our color based on the profile the same way and two it manages the available color within our image not necessarily the appearance always but also the available color that's something we'll talk about in more detail later and we also if we want if we wanted to print and in these tutorials we'll talk about printing as well but if we want to print we also need to think about the profile of our output device namely printer could be a pre-press could be an inject printer or a lab that prints our color right and the reason why we there are two essentially reasons why we might need such a profile one reason is that we want to soft proof and soft proofing is a process where we try to simulate how the image might look when it's printed and we simulate how that looks on our monitor this helps us kinda predict what the problems might be once we print our image what are the limitations of that printing device and if we know how it might look we can adjust for those problems and the second reason why we meet, might need that output is that sometimes there will be a situation where we'll need to convert our file from an RGB format to the CMYK format and we'll need to do that under control environment in our own monitor and not let somebody else do that and potentially screw up the color so we will need all those profiles well those profiles don't mean much unless you have color managed applications in other words applications that can read the profiles and interpret them in a proper way and there are you know Adobe products like Lightroom Bridge Camera Raw and Photoshop which if we have all of them they create color managed workflow now what I really wanted to point out is that if you have on the hardware side of things a good quality monitor an ambient light a hardware calibrator those three key components from hardware standpoint and on software side of things you have your profiles you have your color managed applications and if you combine all of those components you have a color managed workflow and that's exactly what we are going to be discussing in great detail a little bit later so what we're going to do now is take um, basically a more in-depth view of each of those components and then we'll see how they work together to give us a proper color managed workflow